who is half Pueblo Indian and half white. He had been in the United States Army and had been sent to the Philippines in World War II. In one of the flashback scenes in this book, his army boss orders Taro to shoot a Japanese soldier. However, he could not do it. He was ordered to do it, but he could not do it. He could not follow the order. This novel shows us basic humanity, basic values of life, basic values of making personal decisions, and not just doing something because someone tells you to do it, even if it causes you, you to suffer as a result. Taro felt that shooting the Japanese soldier would be like shooting his own grandfather. He couldn't do it. In one context, the army context, his lack of action was seen as a failure. But in the bigger context, we, the reader, can see this as his biggest success the recognition of the value of human life. And the fact that he could see the Japanese soldier as his own grandfather shows how we are all interconnected. We are all related to one another, even if our cultures are different. <laughs> あの、彼は彼の情報の命令に従うことができませんでした。その小説は私たちの人間性の基本的な人間性生きることに対する基本的な価値を表しています。日本人の、日本、日本軍の軍人を見たとき、自分の職を職を射撃するような気持ちになりました。アメリカ軍の立場からの解釈では、彼の報道力の切除は失態だったかもしれません。しかし、もう少し視野を広げれば、私たち読者
of the Irish National Poet Laureate, Sean Staney, who won the Nobel Prize in Literature in 1995. And Yoshi Sensei, in a joint agreement between Baipo University and Yamaguchi University, was able to arrange for his friend, Mr. Haney, to visit Japan and to talk with university students and teachers. And that was a wonderful, special seminar involving about 20 Baipo students and an equal number of Yamaguchi University students. We were able to spend a whole day with Mr. Haney to eat with him, talk with him, joke with him, listen to his lecture, and ask questions. And there were two other Nobel Prize winners in literature at that seminar. One of them was Kinzaburo Oe. What a great opportunity for Baiko students to interact with great writers and to see that these great writers are ordinary human beings, just like you and me. Uh, what a great inspiration that was, and what a great experience for Baiko students. This is one of the many events that are part of Baiko's tradition of literary excellence. And I felt so fortunate to have been able to participate in that, thanks to Yoshizu Sensei. I sometimes am annoyed by people who say, why do we need literature? Literature can't help you get a job. I feel sorry when I hear comments like this because people who say that just don't get it. The further irony is that, in fact, literature graduates often get great jobs because their language skills are so good and their basic understandings of humanity are so deep. So when someone asks, why do we need literature? It's like someone asking, why do we need music? After all, music is just sounds on the air, but music is much more than that, isn't it? It's an uplifting of the spirit. It's a rising to a higher level of human experience. Speaking of music, when I first came to Japan, it was in October. It was just two months before Christmas, and I was thinking this would probably be a pretty terrible Christmas for me. And I was remembering all the Christmas concerts at home, and then I went to my first Baiko Christmas program at the Umegato campus. And Nakayama Sensei was directing the choir. And it was my first time to hear the Hallelujah Chorus sung in Japan with 100 girls holding candles in the dark. And it was such a powerful experience for me. And then the girls sang Silent Night. And it was so beautiful. I, I couldn't stop crying. The tears just flowed out because I had thought this would be a terrible Christmas, but it was one of the best Christmases ever. Uh, so that same Christmas, the chaplain at that time read the story of the gift of Magi by O. Henry at a chapel service. He didn't talk or give a lecture. He simply read the story in English. And I can still hear the sound of his voice and how pure it was and how beautifully his words echoed against the silence. Another memorable experience. One day I was in a beginning reading class. And we were reading the children's classic novel, Charlotte's Web by E.B. White. And we had just reached the part where Charlotte's babies, which are hundreds of tiny spiders, were born. At that moment, as I turned the page, I heard students gasp. <gasps> and I, I looked at my white shirt, 
and there was a small black spider crawling <laughs> on my glass. And the class seemed to think that the spider had crawled out of my book <laughs> onto my shirt. It was just one of those coincidences that seems like a miracle. What a serendipitous moment that was. I will never forget the student's look of wonder. Today, I am so honored that Shoko Miyano Sensei is in the audience back there. Thank you for coming today. Miyano Sensei is retired now and lives in Hiroshima. But she taught English literature at Vico for many years. And we spent many hours discussing literature. Because of her, I read all of Graham Greene's novels. And it was so much fun to analyze the books and discuss the deep meanings of the books with her. And um, here is a copy of her book uh, that was published in English. She also had a, a book in Japanese about it. But this was her English book, um, Innocence in Graham Greene's Novels. And this book is now listed in many bibliographies of significant works about Graham Greene and his writings. I learned so much from Miyano Sensei, uh, especially from her discussions of good versus evil. Now, in this class, one of the books we read was The Red Pony uh, by John Stein Beck of California. And uh, this novel, uh, in this novel, the boy Jody grows up. And this novel, this novella, is a Bildungsroman. Roman means novel, Bildungs means education. So it means education novel or growing up novel. Um, it's a German word. But it's about the, this book is about the, a Bildungsroman is a story of a growth of a young boy into a man, or a young girl into a woman. And some other examples of Bildungsroman novels are, of course, The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn, To Kill a Mockingbird, uh, Catcher in the Rye, which we're reading in another American literature class right now, and Portrait of the Artist as a Young Man, the growth of people. In Steinbeck's book, The Red Pony, Jody learns much about life, about death, and about what is right and what is wrong. You remember that after his pony died, he temporarily lost his respect for human life and he did things like shoot innocent birds for no reason. This might remind you of the title, To Kill a Mockingbird, by Harper Lee. Why would anybody want to kill a mockingbird? It's innocent. It sings beautiful songs. To kill a mockingbird is just wrong. <laughs> After Jody killed a bird in the air for no reason, he felt bad, and he decided not to do that anymore. So we see that he began to grow up. So in this novel, uh, in another section of the novel, we meet the character Gitano. You remember that Gitano is an old paisano a country peasant, a very old man. And he returns to the place where he was born in order to die. And in these scenes, we see that the young boy Jody has grown up so much that he has matured to a greater wisdom than even that of his parents, remember? He, he actually became more mature than his own parents. And as he watches, as Gitano fades in the distance, as he walks into the mountains, 
with an old horse, never to return. He's learned a lot about life. In some ways, I feel like the character Gitano. I have had a wonderful life in Japan with experiences I will never forget. But now the time has come for me to return to the place where I was born. The old horse I'll be dragging with me is my darling husband, Bill. <laughs> Our home at Bico Apartments is the only home he and I have ever known as husband and wife for the past 15 years. And this job at Bico University is where I have spent the longest part of my career. But now it is time for us to go back to the place where we were born. I just want to thank all of you for giving me so many rich experiences in life and in literature. Thank you. What's your plan after going back to your native town? What's your plan? What's my plan? So uh, I'll go back to Texas uh, where all my family lives and